What's good, YouTube? Quinn Wade, basketball analysis. Come to y'all a quick video. We're going to talk about Michael B. Easy going to the Los Angeles Lakers for pennies on the dime. Um, he basically not going to make anything, but he did give the New York Knicks, after they lost Porzingis, some quality minutes on 13 points a game and 22 minutes a game, which is really not that many minutes. But he, he shot 50% from the field, 39% from three. But he didn't shoot that many threes. Um, he always been a, a, a mid-range, old-school type of scorer, easy buckets type of scorer besides the long two sometimes. But other than that, he, he's not a, deep, a, a, a real three-point shooter. But he can knock them down if given the opportunity. And that's why he only shoot about one to two at, at the max. His career high at shooting threes is just 2.2. So that just show you that he never been a big three point shooter, but when he has to take him or when he has to take him low in the shot clock, or if he's really wide open, he can knock down that shot. And the Lakers can use another scorer and a guy that can come off the bench and give them some type of punch with a bench that's continuing to improve. I feel like the Lakers bench has improved since they first signed LeBron. It's a lot of talent out here that you can get your hands up on, but you have to be able to, you know, view the talent and see how that they guess how they will fit. Um, this roster is still improving, but at the same time, it's a lot of players that they have signed and they need to sign and they might let go. So we don't know the end product of how this roster is going to look. But Michael Beasley is a guy that's going to give you what we all know. He's going to go out there and, and give you scoring. He's going to give you jump shots. He's going to give you floor space to a certain extent. He's going to give you a guy that can create a shot off the dribble, get to the paint, get to the free throw line. And he, he's a tough shot maker. Uh, he's a guy that was out of the league. And now he's been able to stay in the league for the last couple years because of him being more mature, him taking the advantage of the opportunities that he was given and making the best out of them, whether it was Houston, whether it was Milwaukee, or whether it was just trying to put his name back on the map in New York in a big market where he was able to take advantage of Chris Tasperzingis going down and give you 13 points, five rebounds, one assist a game on 50% shooting. So, he played 74 games in New York. He started 30 of them, and you seen the different type of Michael Beasley that he used to – he basically had a better season than even his rookie season. You can make that argument, and Michael Beasley is not old. He's only 29 years old. He'll be 30 by the time the season is about to end, and he's a 6'9", 235, small forward that can also play power forward. Is he a defender? No. he never been known as a defender even in college, even in high school, and he's still not going to give you very much help defense. He's not going to give you rim protection. He's not going to give you switching. Um, at I'm being an excellent switcher, but he's a guy that's going to come in and just do what he's supposed to do, not try too hard to do anything else. And you got a guy like LeBron that can create shots. You got a guy like Rondo that's always pass first friendly. And I just want to see if he can buy into that team concept going to a team like the Lakers that has the Lonzo Balls too, that once, even Brandon Ingram when Lonzo Ball went down, he was able to play point four a little bit, and that helped Brandon Ingram grow even more as a player. And I wonder how are they going to utilize Michael Beasley? Is he going to get 15 minutes? Is he going to get the 20 minutes? Or is he just going to be an insurance, uh, insurance policy? Basically what I mean by that is, if somebody goes down, somebody get injured, you prefer to have Michael Beasley on your roster than not, which means he could be the the eighth, the ninth, the tenth man in rotation throughout the season. And if somebody goes down, he can get quality minutes and they won't have that big of a drop off. Maybe when it comes to defense, they have a big drop off. But when it comes to scoring, he can score just as many points as Brandon Ingram and he can do it efficiently. But he also is a guy that, well, doesn't buy into team concept defensively, even though he's been in the league for a couple years now and he's been able to stay in the league the last couple of seasons after again bounced out the league. That's something that I'm surprised he never really did. You know, Luke Walton is a coach that's on the hot seat to people. I think Luke Walton is a good coach. He should be able to keep his spot. But um, he's a guy that's on the hot seat, bringing in LeBron. You, you bring in a lot of 
you know, attention. Every game is just huge because LeBron James is playing. This is going to put a lot of spotlight on players like Lonzo Ball and Brandon Ingram to be even better because they have a guy that is all about winning in LeBron. And, you know, having LeBron, it, it, it can be tough. Last year, you know, it was all about development. It was all about getting the best out of Ingram, getting the best out of Hart, getting the best out of Kuzma, letting them grow into their role, letting them grow into being better players and getting the growing pains of losing, the growing pains of turning the ball over, taking tough shots, losing close games. That was all was supposed to be them developing all that for the next couple seasons and adding LeBron just accelerates that growth and change the direction of how this team is going to go. Because when you add a guy like LeBron, he, he becomes the team, he becomes the identity. And I see a lot of Lakers fans having a problem with that because LeBron might be bigger than the Lakers sometimes in the season. And people might not even care about the Laker brand. They might just be caring more about LeBron and you know, having that type of player on his roster that you add him basically for free because he was a free agent, you had the cap space. Now you bring him back down near the same roster that you had last year with a couple more veterans. And this team went from let's rebuild, let's grow together, let's get chemistry, let's continue to win together, lose together, and be a team to now you, you automatically in a situation where winning is the only thing that matters. It ain't about growth. It's about trying to learn on the fly how to be a winner. And that's something that Michael Beasley can not show these players because he hasn't really played on any championship level teams since he's been in the NBA. He played on the Heat. He played on the, the Wolves. He played on Phoenix. He played with the Heat again. He played with the Rockets where they wasn't had they didn't have him that long. They only had him for twenty games. The Bucks wasn't about winning championships when he was there. And obviously he put up some empty numbers in New York. But I think Michael Beasley definitely can play. He definitely can score at this level. He can give you um, isolation baskets. He can create some mismatches because of his athleticism, his height, and his ability to go down low in the low post, high post, or even in the mid-range to shoot over little world players. And he's a guy that can take on little world players if you try to switch and punish them with, you know, the mid post and the low post. So I think Michael Beasley will be a nice addition. But like I said, the trajectory of this team is different now with LeBron. They're all about trying to, you know, get to the playoffs and try to get to the out of the first, second round. Instead of them trying to build slowly and help their players develop, it has all been accelerated when you add these type of players and LeBron at the same time. So I definitely want to see how this roster is going to look coming into a trade deadline because I feel like once they get that chemistry, once they start winning, once they start knowing their flaws and how teams scout against them, they're going to try to make that next move. And Magic Johnson even said it at Summer League that they're going to try to make that move or try to see what they have by that time and then try to go into the playoff guns blazing because once they get that playoff spot, they feel like they're just as good as any team. I feel like they uh, are way under – obviously the Golden State Warriors, but other than that, they're, they're on an equal playing field with other teams. But like I said, Michael Beasley is a guy that you prefer to have than not to have at all, especially on a team like this where you need as many scores as possible, especially in that offense where Lou Walton came from playing under Phil Jackson, playing with Steve Curry, you need the movement, you need the scoring, you need the size um, a little bit, and they do run a little bit of triangle every once in a while. So Michael Beasley should be able to fit in there because he's a low post, mid post guy, and he's a guy that can knock down jumpers and play off other people to a certain extent. But like I said, he ain't got that winning mentality. He never really played for a winning organization. But the Heat is, but they, they wasn't a championship team when he was there. So... With that being said, I want to know how this is going to work. I want to know what he's going to do. I want to know how they're going to utilize him, If he, what type of minutes he's going to get, how is he going to play with LeBron, can he play with LeBron, is, can he play the four, can he play um, a little bit of the three, how are they going to utilize him with different type of matchups, how are they going to get the best out of him because he's more of an isolation scorer uh, and a guy that can just come in and give you buckets, but they kind of already got that with certain players on this roster. He's not really the biggest spot-up guy, but he also – Ain't a terrible scorer or shooter in other places. But this roster still need a little bit stitching, a little bit more cuts, and a little bit more stitches done. Um, this roster is definitely far from being finished. 
And I don't really want to judge this move as a terrible or a bad one because I got to see what else is going to happen before I know how they're going to utilize Michael Beasley and Dominion. So let me know what you guys think. Do you think this is a good pickup? Do you think this was stupid? Do you think Michael Beasley doesn't fit what they're trying to do? Do you think Michael Beasley is going to be overrated and get waived? Or do you think Michael Beasley can come in there and give them buckets for 20 to 30 to 40 games and have a couple of 10, 15, 20 point games every once in a while? And then they'd be like, oh, we live happy, happy after. Kind of, kind of remind me of Brandon Isaiah Thomas last year. He's a guy that they traded for just for the salary dump, but at the same time, he can give them buckets and give them scores, and he never really played defense. He never was the most efficient guy, wasn't the best guy off the off the ball, and I can see a lot of that in Michael Beasley, too, so I want to see how they're going to try to, you know, utilize him, and I think that's going to be the biggest thing is seeing how Michael Beasley going to fit with LeBron, fit with the bench, and fit with the style of Lou Walton. And that's something that I can't really gauge or judge right now until I see it. So this could be an underrated move. This can be an overrated move. This can be a move that they can create correct just by waving or trading them away as a salary filler for another player to go along with LeBron in you know, the trade deadline or even just buy them out, let them go somewhere else by the trade deadline. So we don't really know what this move is going to do. We don't really... This fit don't really seem right is basically what I'm saying. But also, they might know something we don't know. They might talk about Beasley, about his role and stuff before he signed the contract, which they should have done. And I don't know any of those details, so I can't really say. Check out my website, AnalysisPlayground.com. Link will be in the description in the comment section below. Check out my Facebook page, AnalysisPlayground.com. Link will be in the description in the comment section below. Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis, I'm gone. And let me know what you guys think about Michael Beasley joining the L.A. Lakers um, this year.